Hey biz bestie. So you want to start a business that is so exciting and you're probably feeling a little bit overwhelmed, a little bit unsure of what are the things that you absolutely need to have versus what are just the things that would be nice to have, especially because when you actually get set up as a new business owner, like salespeople from all these different places start coming out of the woodworks. So knowing what you need, and what are just nice things for the future is pretty important. In this video today, I'm gonna to walk you through the exact steps that you've got to do in order to get set up as a business and start bringing in clients. And it's gonna be like bare bones, the absolute essentials, no frills, no fluff. Make sure you stay till the end of the video because I'm also gonna give you a checklist that I found that is really helpful in giving you the step-by-step -step of exactly what you need as you're setting up your business. I'm Amy Walker, your biz bestie, and I've helped a lot of clients be able to launch and grow their business, like in the hundreds. And one thing that I really get bummed out to see is I've had so many business owners come to me after they've just launched and they have spent a ton of money and they still haven't gotten any clients. And what happened was they didn't invest in bad things. They just didn't do the essential first steps. It's like they skipped something in the mix. So this video is really going to be an important one if you're looking to start up your business, because it's going to take you through like, what do you really need to have in place? What do you really need to be focusing on? And then you won't get sucked down the rabbit hole of shiny syndrome of like, Ooh, that would be cool to have. I should get this. I should get that. And before you know it, you've blown tons of cash. You don't have the money to invest in the things that you really need, but you have a whole bunch of stuff that will be useful in a couple of years if you're still in business. So let's dive in. The very first thing that you need is a financially viable business idea. Just because you love your business idea does not mean that there's a market for it or that other people love you doing it. So, I want you to be cautious about coming up with an idea that's been like never done before and at the same time requires a lot of education because what will happen, those are very hard businesses to start off. There's not a market for it. There's not people already searching for it and you have to do a lot of education to get people even convinced that they want to try it out. Now, it doesn't mean that we haven't had some really innovative things happen that way. I'm just telling you it's not the easiest business to start off, although you could hit it really big. What are the best, most financially viable businesses to start out are ones that are gonna kind of check off these boxes. Number one, there's already a market for it, but number two, you can do it better. Okay, so think about it like Uber and Lyft. Well, first of all, Uber, they could do taxis better. And then Lyft, look at Uber, and we're like, we could do that better, right? Um, Uber Eats and, you know, there's all these delivery services that have popped up in the last couple of years because they're filling a need and they're doing it better than what had been done before. Now, in terms of financial viability, there needs to be a demand, um, but not too much competition. If your market is saturated with tons of competition, that wouldn't be the right place to set up that business or you would want to find, you know, just a, a different business model to launch. The most important thing of knowing if it's going to be financially viable or not is actually running your cost analysis. So what you're going to need to look at is how much will it cost you to acquire a client? How much will it cost you to produce the product? or service, and and that could be production costs or fulfillment costs. Production costs would be if it's a product, how much does it cost to buy it or make it? Fulfillment costs, how much does it cost to actually do the service? And then you're gonna to wanna to look at profit margin and set the pricing. Then you need to look at that and see if people will pay that much for it. I am gonna give you an example of a woman that I spoke with, this was several years ago, but she, we ended up on a call together and she wanted to know how to grow her business and she was making custom fans. And um, she was had an amount that she was charging and they, they were doing it for like bridesmaid gifts and sorority sisters and things like that. And when we actually got into it, the, the price that people were willing to pay and the profit margin were just simply not there. And we looked at some, I gave her some other ideas of like, you know, you could uh, just buy fans from other countries, buy cool fans, see if you could get them screen printed. But no, she really loved sitting at her kitchen table and designing these. It was not a financially viable business idea because there wasn't enough profit. She was basically using it as her personal crafting time and including free labor. But if she had to pay somebody else to do that labor, then there was no way that they were gonna be making money. In fact, they were gonna be losing money. So the business idea, it just wasn't set to grow. And you wanna know that from the very beginning because guess what? If your first idea isn't financially viable, 
there's another one that could be. If those things all look good, then you're ready to move into step number two, which is your business setup checklist. So this business setup checklist is actually brought to you by mycompanyworks.com and I just thought it was really conclusive and I liked it a lot. So let's go through this and we'll put the link down below. Um, number one is selecting your name and your legal structure. That is if you want to be an LLC or an S corp, a C corp, or a sole proprietorship, I do not recommend that you be a sole proprietorship. They have the worst tax advantages. Um, I recommend LLC. And then as an LLC, you can actually choose if you want to file as a corporation or as a sole proprietorship. So it's got a little bit of flexibility. However, if you want the highest level of legal protection, you would want to actually be a corporation. Naming your business, you want to make sure that there's a good domain available. Could I go back and do it again? I probably wouldn't name my business Amy Walker Consulting because number one, it's a really long domain name. And so everything we do is long. And then number two, it also makes everybody feel like they need to personally have connection with me because my name's on the company. I probably would have gone back through and named it something that gave us a little bit more space to grow and evolve and create more of a collaborative type community, which we do have. Um, I do have other experts that work with us as well. So it's not like I have to be the person with all the answers, but um, I do feel like it's important to think what think through what you want your business to grow into. If you know you want to sell this company, I wouldn't put your name on it. Okay, the second thing that you're going to do is you're going to write your business plan. And um, that's one that I'm going to share with you at the end what I recommend in writing your sales and marketing plan because most of what they say online about writing a business plan, I feel like it's not very actionable. And I want you to have a really actionable sales and marketing plan. So stick with me until the end and then I'll show you what you really need. Okay, obtaining your federal employer identification number, that's your FEIN number, that you're gonna use over and over again and you have to have that in place before you can get your business bank account, which is number four on the list, you need a business bank account. You do not wanna be mixing your personal and your business money at the same time. Like, that gets really messy. The next one is leasing your office or warehouse space. I'm gonna be honest with you, I would try to figure out a business where you don't have to pay for a retail location first. Um, doesn't mean you can't move into one, but I love businesses that have low overhead costs, especially as new startups. And so if possible, see if you can figure out one where you don't really have to go in and sign an agreement there. Next is obtain any licenses or permits. This one is critical. If you need licenses or permits, you need them from the very get go because you could put yourself out of business before you even get off the ground because you're just missing the things you need. The next is your sales tax permit. Uh, once a quarter, all businesses have to go in and file their state sales tax, even if you don't have any. You still have to go in and set up and like say, I don't have any sales tax. So for my business, because we sell info products and we sell them primarily online, we very rarely have sales tax. But if I sell a physical book to someone in the state of Georgia, I have to pay sales tax on it. So every quarter you go in and you just file your sales tax report. Okay, next is a business license. A lot of cities require you to have a business license even if you're working from home. So find out if that's applicable in your area. Um, hire employees is number seven on their list. I wouldn't. Um, if at all possible, I would try to find independent contractors and I would try to find virtual assistants to help you with any needs that you have. Number eight, set up an accounting and rec record keeping system. This is where you want to get QuickBooks and this is really important because you need to keep your financials in order for sure. Number nine is obtain business insurance. If you've got, I, I think that there are some businesses where you could put that off a little bit, but if you've got um, inventory, if you've got a lot of materials that you're keeping. Basically, if your building burnt down, would it put you out of business? Like in my business, if my building burnt down, it wouldn't put me out of business. I would just need to go buy a new laptop, everything's stored on the cloud. Um, and I don't have any liability because I don't have any people coming here. And when I do have liability, then I get insurance for the events that I'm doing. I'm sure there's gonna be some insurance person who will watch and tell us in the comments the reasons why everyone needs insurance. I'm open to hearing it. Then we have develop a business identity. They're really talking about branding. And then on here they have number 12 is get the word out, which is marketing. So we're gonna go a little bit more in depth on branding, marketing, and sales, because this is where I really think you need to focus for your business plan. But like, I loved that checklist. So big round of applause for the people at mycompanyworks.com. Thank you for putting together that awesome checklist for us. All right, my friends, 
I want you to recognize that this is gonna be a little bit speedy going through your sales, your marketing, and your branding, and yet I have an entire playlist dedicated to sales and an entire playlist dedicated to marketing. So binge watch, there's so much good information on this channel. When you're putting together a business plan, I don't like most of the templates that I see for business plans. I feel like it, you're putting a bunch of hypothesis on paper. A lot of it is not really actionable and you still don't necessarily know what to do. So let's break it down into three really simple steps. Number one, you need to have a brand identity. So that means you are gonna to wanna to have a logo, you are gonna to wanna to have specific colors, specific fonts. I don't want you to go out and hire an expensive branding development person at this point in time. The reality is you don't know your business well enough to produce the end all be all brand. The only exception to this is tech. If you are funded and you are going into tech, you really need a tight brand from the very beginning, but you also have the funding to do the research to learn more about your buyer to then feed to the branding expert. For the rest of you, it's going to be probably a year before you have enough data and really understand your ideal buyer for that to make sense. In the meantime, go on to Fiverr and pay somebody 50 bucks to produce a logo for you. Or if you are feeling a little bit more fancy, go to 99designs and pay someone $299 to produce a logo for you and you get to have more options because they run a brand contest. At the end of it, get the color codes, get the fonts and use those over and over and over again. The most important thing that you can do with branding right now is actually get clear on your messaging and who you serve. When it comes to marketing and sales, again, we just don't have time to do that justice right now. Um, so, you know, make sure that you spend some more time on the channel. But just to get started, your most important thing to focus on with marketing is lead generation. So when you look at opportunities, look at it through the lens of, does this bring me leads or not? Like TV appearances don't bring you leads. Um, a speaking engagement where you can give something away for free in exchange for names, emails, and phone numbers, that does bring you leads. Now sales. Sales, get excited to learn how to sell. Get excited about opening the door to your service and bringing new people in because it's so much fun. If you've got any kind of wonky, um, false beliefs about sales, now is the time to start shifting those. And I would love to give you a gift to help you along the way on your sales process. It is my book. I have a book called the I'm Not a Salesperson Sales Book, How to Sell Like a Natural Even If You're Not. And I would love to give it away for free. So you can click the link down below and go grab that, download it, start reading, and start that sales training process. All right, my biz bestie, now you know what you need to become a business owner. And the next video that I want you to watch is what does it mean to be a woman owned business? Because this might be a certification that could bring you a lot of money in government contracts. Go check it out. I'm Amy Walker, your biz bestie, and thanks for joining me today.